Hi, everybody. So I don't know for you, but I'd like to move a little. Do you guys want to get up and move a little bit? Like kind of stretch? I feel like the room's a little... What are we after lunch, right? Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. Just like a little bit. Maybe rub your neighbor, maybe say hi. So, wow, here we are. Thank you for coming and being here. Whenever you feel like it, you can sit down. Unless you want to stay standing up, that could be fun too. So I don't know if it's ever happened to, do, to, for, to you, but have you ever started? My sound is really loud. Am I really loud? No? I don't know if you've ever started a project and you didn't take it all the way. You started something, but you didn't finish. Has it ever happened? Have you ever read a book and didn't really take it till the end? Like chapter three, you stopped. Did you ever, I don't know, clean the garage and it's still kind of up in the air? So I do that. We do that. I don't know why, but somehow we do that. And I was really wanting to figure out why we do that. And not only why we do that, but how can we not do that? When something is meaningful and something we say is actually relevant to us, how do we actually do it so we take it all the way to the end? And so I went and I studied. I went and I got a master's in psychology and a couple of other masters, and I, I found answers. I mean, I did. I did get some answers. But somehow, none of the ones I got really helped me make the difference. I would start something. I was all gung-ho. I was convinced I was going to get it this time all the way. But then I didn't. And so I thought I would study myself. I think that's a better place for me to learn from. And so I, can you hear me? This mic is a little strange. Yeah, we hear? Cool. So what I did is I decided to go really deep inside myself. And what I decided to do, I brought you a little something. Um, when I started this project, I was 320 pounds. I was wearing this dress, which ironically, because of the line in the middle, kind of is like, half of myself, twice of myself, rather. So this was my project. I decided I was going to take on a project that I really would affect my life, because at the time, my daughter was born, and I felt like it would be important to actually have a legacy to, to leave to her. And so if I could figure out, how do I go from point A to point B when I actually want to achieve something? So let's just say this is our point A. And if you don't have particular issues with your weight, maybe it's something else, writing a book, cleaning the garage, you know, getting a new master's, learning a language, writing a book, whatever it is for you. At some point in the process, I said, I want to be thin. So this was kind of my impetus. This was my vector. I don't know if you remember in physics when we studied that. This represents energy. It represents me going from here to here. And that is one of the things we do that's different than animals. We actually can conceptualize. I want to go from here to here. I want to change something. I want to grow into something. I want to improve something. And so what happens is we say, OK, I'm here, and I want to get here. So here I am at 320 pounds. That's my point A. And I'm thinking I want to go to 150, 160. So that's my point B. And I say, I want to be thin. The thing is, what's happening in my head as I'm saying I want to be thin, there's something else going on. There is thin people, they look a little vain. Thin people, they don't look so safe. Somehow they look dry and not very friendly. <laughs> right? I'm not saying this is right, I'm just saying this is what my head was doing. So, I don't know what's happening, but for thin people, I don't know, it's like, I don't feel like I can trust them. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, if you, if you remember in physics, vectors actually representing energy, this little energy that was taking me towards my goal was really combating against all this energy that was taking me away from my goal. So I would lose a little bit of weight, I would regain a little bit of weight. I would lose the weight, I would regain the weight. And we do that. We want to write a book, but we say, ah, I'm a bad writer. My teacher in sixth grade, they told me I was a bad writer. Or I want to clean the garage. Well, it's not that much, it's not that big of a deal. Or, you know, people that are too organized, they're kind of anal, they're not so cool. So maybe I should keep my mass. So we keep having these thoughts that are like pulling in one direction and then the other ones are pulling in the other way. And that kind of doesn't work because the energy gets stuck right here. This is like a black hole where we keep moving forward and we keep being pulled backwards. And so really the energy is spent right here. And so I've coached hundreds of people around this and what seems to happen is there is five different kinds of these thoughts. We're going to call them vectors. And what they seem to be is what we call outdated thoughts. So what those are is thoughts that are no longer accurate. So for instance, in my case, at some point I was a little person, I was a kid, and I wasn't very strong. And so everything that had to do with like 
being fat had to do with like, I'm, I'm strong, I can hold my ground. Like in the playground, I could feel like the skinny guys were the one that got beat up. So the thing is now I'm 5'10", 11, kind of, and I'm a boxer. Well, my daughter took offense to that. I'm kind of a boxer in training, she said, whatever. <laughs> But either way, I can defend myself. I'm, not, I'm no longer this little skinny kid in the background, you know, that is afraid of being hurt. So some of these thoughts are really no longer true. So maybe we used to be a bad writer, but then we studied writing and we became really good at it. So maybe that's an outdated thought that needs to be updated. And we, need, we literally have to say to ourselves, this is no longer true. Because even if I'm no longer three feet ten, there's a part of me that still was afraid that if I would lose too much weight, I would start looking like, you know, the skinny kid that you can go beat up. And so that wasn't really helping me. Another kind of thought that we have is that they're actually accurate. And an accurate thought is something that's actually true. So I'm French. You may have picked up my accent. Maybe, some of you. I used to go to Ariana Huffington's speech all the time, and she would start with this thing about how really her accent is not really Greek. She's from Reno. But someone told her that it was really good to have a good accent. So I do the same thing. I'm not really French. But anyway, so an accurate thought, <laughs> I swear to God, an accurate thought is actually something that's true. So when I decided to move to the States, I didn't speak English. It was kind of a good idea to go learn it, right? So the accurate thought was, I cannot move to the States. So in that case, that was my point B. I can't move to the States because I don't speak English. So in this case, I would take that thought and I would just go and study English, which I did. And then I moved to the States and I could speak English, which was really cool. The next one is feel our feelings. And there is many versions that we don't do that. We hide. I don't know about you, but when I grew up, I have this little story about my daughter who went skiing with me and my parents, and she fell and hurt herself pretty badly. And when we went back to my mother's house, my daughter was still crying because she had hurt herself. And she's crying, and my mother keeps saying, would you like some Nutella? <laughs> and my daughter is kind of a little puzzled between the tears, and she's like, no, I'm, I'm just sad. I'm just hurt. Like, OK, but do you want some Nutella? No, I really don't. But I stood there watching that scene between them two and thinking to myself, wow, that's probably what's happened to me. Like every time I would have a feeling, I would be offered some Nutella. And, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> right? <laughs> Nutella, Nutella. Yeah. So obviously, obviously that doesn't work. And as I was going to my point B, I had to learn to feel my feelings. There was just no other way. And that's difficult because we trained in this culture to, to cover them. You know, we're not really allowed to be sad. We're not allowed to be angry, particularly women. We really, when we're angry, we kind of like, well, put them in a hospital. That's really a scary thing. So I had to feel, I had to learn how to do that. And I remember being in Paris once, which I don't know if you've been in Paris, but when you're 320 pounds, it's kind of like you're 700 because everybody is 90 pounds about. So I'm this really large person. And I walk in that store, and I'm trying to find a pair of pants, which if you're 100, 320 pounds in Paris is really difficult. And I owned one, so I would wash it at night and you know, wear it the next day, and that was hard. It was hard. Like My friends were all into fashion, and I couldn't do that. And so I walk in that store, and that really skinny, cute-looking girl, you know, she hands me these pants, and it's like she's literally like avoiding the disease catching of like being fat or something. Like She's handing me this thing, kind of like, you know, here, go try that. And I'm standing there, and I go in the, waiting, in the dressing room, and I try it on. Well, I kind of try to try it on, because what I remember is this experience of like, like literally, like, and I'm like trying to like, you know, and it doesn't fit. It doesn't pass my thighs. And this woman who had basically said to me, you know, it's going to fit. Like every fat woman in the city owns these pants. Like it's going to work. There's no doubt. And I remember sitting in this waiting room, or, you know, literally having to like, like, what do I do with this? Like, what do I do with this, like, humiliation, scared, miserable, judged? I mean, that whole thing was really heavy. And I, and I walked out, and I handed it back to her, and I said, you know, they, I don't like the color very much. And I walked away. And I was with my mom, and very typically she said, do you want to go for some Nutella? <laughs> and I said, no, I want, to, I want to go sit, and I want to, you know, feel what that is. So learning to feel the feeling was a big deal, because there was no being thin without feeling my feelings. I discovered that's the big, that's the thing. That's the aha of the thing. There's no pill, there's no... People always ask me, like, how did you do that? And I'm always like, there's no doing. It's, it's, I shifted my state of being that I now allow myself to feel all those things that I was trying to cover up. The next one is the God of opinion, I call it. 
And what that is is I lived my life where other people's opinions were more important than mine. So I was in Paris one time again, 300 pounds. I'm at a, ba at a bakery, really good bakery, actually. And I'm standing at the counter, and there is this really cute guy, really hot guy next to me. And the woman at the counter says, you know, are you guys together? And the guy literally, like, he goes like, well, you know, and he's checking me, he checks this part, which at the time was, you know, this part, whatever, far. And he looks at me and he says, um, no, like, why would I be with this girl kind of energy? And then 10 years later, I'm now 160 pounds, and I'm 10 years about in LA, and I'm at the library bakery. It's a very good bakery. And I'm sitting there, standing there, and the woman at the counter looks to me, and there's this really cute guy again, really hot, and she says to me, are you guys together? And the guy's like, well, and he's checking me, and he goes, well, not yet. And exactly, you know, it was a, it was a good feeling. It felt, it felt like nice, much nicer, because the first one was literally like a, a knife, you know, in your gut. But it didn't feel like mine. It felt like somehow the first guy had attacked me and that felt horrible. And the second time, it felt like this guy kind of like, you know, could have taken me out. But other than that, it was like, what about me? Why do I have to wait for these people to tell me feel horrible or feel good and they decide that? Why, why do we let people do that? Like, why, why was I not able to just like or not like or judge or not judge, but why can I not keep that to myself? And the last one, which is not least, actually appeared very recently, and it's interesting because I've lost weight 15, pounds, 15 years now, probably. The last one I call the master one is actually, I don't deserve. And that one appeared as I was trying to lose the last five or 10 I'm trying to lose now, and I was kind of like, what's, kind of the, what's the snug? What's, the, what's holding me up? What was holding me up was this idea that I don't actually fully deserve to be happy. And I don't know if you guys have that one, but if you do, kick its ass. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because I don't know who told you, and I don't know who told me, and some teachers, some parents, somewhere along the line, but I do. I do deserve. I do deserve to be happy. I deserve to be comfortable, I deserve to sit in a chair and not wonder if it's going to break when I sit. I do deserve that. So, I don't know if there's something inside of you that does any of those things that prevents you from getting here. Go look at them. Go look at them and take them away. Just remove them so you can actually live that life that matters to you. Thank you. Thank you.